Well, I'm an architect. I've studied architecture, and I'm sure I would have lived, I would have lived as a professional in a different way if we had learned how to design architecture this way. It's a challenge to learn how to make a li live um, uh, buildings. Okay, now Gustavo Garcia, the president of the um, Association of Friends of Gaudi, will take the floor. If you want... Yes, please. Thank you. Good morning. Can you hear me? Thank you. Good morning. Malu, once again, I want to talk before you because I think you have said everything one can say about Gaudi. Next time I will talk before. Um, but I will underline two or three ideas very quickly. First of all, I would like to start with an introduction. What's um, a mix de Gaudí, friends of Gaudí, and who's Gaudí? Well, this association was created by the disciples, the offspring, and the collaborators of this master. It was founded in 1952, um, on the 100th anniversary of Gaudí's birth. And we want to study, we want to promote, and we want to defend Gaudí's work. Last year, we had our 60th anniversary. We organized a few events. So we are really, it's a pleasure for us to be able to um, cooperate and we are open with um, to new projects in the, in the future with this foundation. But who was Antoni Gaudi? He came from Reus, he was young, and it was the end of the 19th century. He was the fifth son of a um, craftsman um, family. He didn't have any um, precedent in the architecture. He didn't have any relationship with architecture in his family. So we should study Gaudí as a singular figure apart from architecture. He's um, singular. He's not related to these methods and the traditional architecture visions. He was a visionary because he introduced in architecture some methods which were completely new. And all this has its origins, as Malou has explained, um, in his childhood. When he was really young, as a child, he had some rheumatic pains. So he couldn't share with his classmates um, this um, leisure time. So his family would take him to Mas de la Calderera, um, a sort of country house. So there he spent many hours contemplating nature and watching nature. And as a child, he got all these processes and um, principles, uh, and he later applied them to architecture. He has repeated many times, Gaudí, that originality is about going back to the origin. For him, the origin was nature. He had learned about nature when he was a child. And during his whole life, he sought what his disciples and his um, collaborators said because, well, actually he didn't write any books, he didn't um, give any speeches, but, well, he talked a lot. So this, his collaborators um, have all these, um, have collected all of this information. So his collaborators said that he sought objective beauty. What's objective beauty? People who work in the field of aesthetics or composition, we know that there's nothing as vague as this. Um, everybody says that, okay, um, you are free to have a taste. How can he talk about objective um, beauty? Well, he was seeking this objective beauty, and he understood really well this principle, a 
principle which engineers know very well and also um, doctors. It's the function determines the structure. This is the principle. Nature creates shapes which are useful and as well beautiful. But he doesn't decouple these two th elements. So we can say a flower is really beautiful because it's got really lively colors, but this is a strategy so that it can attract certain insects and it can guarantee the development of the species. So there is always this relationship, this functional relationship in design processes. This observation can also be illustrated by the fact that Gaudi watched maybe in the, his, his father's um, work how um, smoke goes up in circles. That's why maybe he built his chimneys as a spiral. It's better for the evacuation of um, fumes, of smoke, and it um, gives architecture some special qualities, features. So Gaudi discovered new shapes, the shapes of nature. And these shapes hadn't been used before. Architecture had been working for 5,000 years on Euclidean um, geometry. Euclides, in the 3rd century for Christ, formulated this um, geometry based on regular shapes. This is a geometry which is not present in nature, except for some exceptions. So, when we find regular shapes um, in, in nature, we think they are really strange. When we find um, a cube, we take it to a museum, uh, uh, minerals which form these shapes. But normally, apparently, nat natural shapes don't have this perfect shape. But Euclidean geometry seems to be uh, the result of human abstraction. Our mind uses them because it's easier to work um, with them. But Gaudi um, uh, took these shapes with, don't have, don't follow these rules. They, he took them from nature and he developed some new shapes for architecture. Well, I'm not going to talk about this for a long time because I, I, I wrote um, a thesis, my PhD thesis on this, but okay. So all this is based in scientific foundations. So um, Gaudi's works have a botanic, a geologic, a zoologic um, appearance because they are based on the same principles as nature. We don't only, he doesn't only copy these shapes, but he uses the same principles as nature. The same way um, humans create different styles, we get tired of one, we have a new trend, then we go back to the previous trend, always based in Euclidean geometry, Gaudi proposes a new architecture based on this um, uh, geometry which never tires us, the same way we are never tired of watching landscapes. And it also favors multiple formal solutions. That's why there's, mm, we, we can't find two trees which are exactly the same, even though they are all similar. So there's nothing arbitrary in nature. Everything is planified, is planned according to functional solutions. That's what Gaudi found out when he observed these models that nature has been applying for millions of years. Gaudi said, OK, this has been applied for millions of years. We'll try to find out what the logic, the rationality, and the beauty behind these models. Because 100 years after this architecture, it, these models still um, talk of liberty, of freedom for the future. Because I think we don't understand it enough, and we don't apply it enough in architecture yet. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.